Today we'll be looking at the concept of rectilinear motion, what we call translational motion, 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 the straight line. Many students of physics are always confused of how to use the equations of motion and when to use them. So this class will be looking at how we can derive or how these equations of motion can be derived. But before we go into that, we'll look at some of the important concepts concerning the equations of motion. One, distance, denoted by S, is a separation between two points and is measured in meter. Displacement, also denoted by S, and also measured in meter. When we ask, what is the difference between distance and displacement? Distance is a scalar quantity. Displacement is a distance covered in the specified direction. And therefore, it's a vector quantity. That is the difference between distance and displacement. Then we'll talk about speed. Speed is distance all over time. Speed, V, is equal to distance all over time. Mathematically, we can say that speed is S all over T. And the unit is meter per second. It is also a scalar quantity. We we'll talk about velocity, denoted by V. It is the rate of change of displacement. We can say that displacement all over time. Displacement over time. So we can say that V is equal to S all over T. And the unit is also meter per second. So when you look at this, velocity is measured in meter per second. Speed is measured in meter per second. One will now ask, what's the difference between the two? Like I said earlier, Speed is a scalar quantity, while velocity is a vector quantity. That's the difference between the two. We we'll talk about we know that velocity of two types. We have what we call the initial velocity u and final velocity v. When an object starts, it will start with an start moving, start with an initial velocity and get to a final velocity. But mind you, if an object is at rest, it is stationary, the initial velocity is zero. So when the question says an object starts from rest, you don't need anybody to tell you that u is equal to zero. So we talk about acceleration is velocity, change in velocity all over time. So we can say that acceleration is V minus U all over T. What is this change we're talking about? The difference between the two velocities and it is measured in meter per second square as a unit of acceleration. So one will now start wondering, how do we go about the equations of motion? First of all, let's test this equation. One, we can say that V, sorry, S, is equal to V plus U all over 2 T. 2, we 
we have that v is equal to u plus dt three v square equal to u square plus two as and four we have that s is equal to u t plus half dt square. These are the equations of motion that we want to derive. First, let's start with the first one. We are talking about motion on a straight line. If you have two points, point A and point B, if an object starts from point A, it starts with an initial velocity u and attain the final velocity and cover the time at t. So if you want to know the total distance covered, you have to talk about the average velocity multiplied by time. And mathematically, you can say that s, which is the total distance, is equal to the average velocity. I'm talking about the average of two things. You divide by two times time. And we can call this equation one. From the definition of acceleration, we say that acceleration is equal to V minus U all over T. So we can play around with this. We can say that V minus U equal to AT. That is by cross multiplication. Multiply this by this, by this, and you have this. So by the time you take u to the right-hand side of the equation, you have that v is equal to u plus at. And we can call this equation 2. So from here, if you make t the subject, you make t the subject, it implies that t is equal to v minus u all over a. Call this equation 3. So we'll be playing around between equation 1, 2, and 3. Already we have gotten this first one, which is this, the second one. So we'll play around with this equation 1, 2, 3. To get this and this. So how do we achieve that? Now look at this. If you now take equation 2 and substitute into equation 1. Now equation 2 will have v is equal to u plus 80. So if we substitute that value here, we have s is equal to v, in place of v, we are substituting v u plus 80, u plus 80, plus u, this u, multiplied by t, or by 2. So by the time you collect like terms, you have s is equal to 2u, or u plus u is 2u, plus 80, times t all over 2. So by the time you open the bracket, you have s is equal to 2ut plus 80 square. Plus t by t is 80 t square. All divided by 2. And remember, we can write this as s is equal to 2ut all over 2. But this denominator covers this and this, plus 80 square all over 2, where this 2 can take care of this. And S will be equal to UT plus half 80 square. We have taken care of this. So the last one, how do we achieve it? We substitute equation 3 into 1. You know, t here is v minus u over a. So we we'll substitute this equation into 1. 
substitute equation 3 into equation 1. That is S equal to V plus U all over 2 all over T sorry, all over 2 times in place of uh, T we have V minus U over A V minus U all over A so by the time you open the bracket we can write this as S equal to V over 2 plus U over 2 this two covers this and this and V over A minus U over A so by the time you open the bracket you now have we now have v over 2 times v over a v over 2 times u over a u over 2 times v over a that is what we are going to do so we now have s s to be equal to v square all over 2a that is v times v is v square 2 times a is 2a we we'll move to the second one. This is minus, so it's going to be minus V times U is VU all over 2A minus VU over 2A. Move to the second term. U times V is UV. No multiplication is commutative, so we can interchange the position. U times V the same thing as VU or UV. So, this term is U times V is VU plus VU all over 2A minus because this term is minus. So, U times U is U square all over 2A. That is minus u square all over 2a. So you remember this is minus plus. So these two terms will go. So we now have s to be equal to v square over 2a minus u square over 2a. So we have a common denominator. We can write s is equal to v square minus u square all over 2a. But the denominator is common. So by the time you cross multiply, we have v square minus u square is equal to 2as. So if you take u square to the right hand side, we have v square equal to u square plus 2as, which is this equation. So we have successfully derived the four equations and the next is when and how to use it which we'll be doing in the next class thank you